So first thing, how does the soil feel? We felt some soil yesterday and it felt kind of a little like talcum powder, kind of a little, yeah, we'll see that that is a really good indication. What color is the soil? We talked a little bit about that, a very good indication generally of what kind of soil we're starting with. So in general, as we said yesterday, the darker colored soils contain more decayed plant material and hence on a continuum of organic matter, they, they have more of the soil organic matter. If we see a little kind of rusty or black spots, we can often say that there was a period of water logging and that's not good. And smell will help you with that too. If you smell the soil and it, and it's, it just doesn't smell good, it smells a little putrid, again, <coughs> poorly aerated soils, possibly they've had a history of water logging. And you can test soil drainage with a shovel test, it's pretty easy to do. And you can test soil moisture. So uh, by the way, I should go back and quickly say that to test soil drainage, you dig a hole, you fill it up, and you see how long it takes for it to drain 50%, 25%. And you know, if it's still, still there hours later, we have a bit of a problem. You know, what's funny is you said it could smell putrid, and that's actually anaerobic organisms can produce a number of acids, and one of them is called putric acid. Oh, my goodness. And, <laughs> and it smells like vomit. So, yeah. And kind of, I think, kind of sulfury. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, it can be hydrogen sulfides in there as well. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, and you can test soil moisture. Of course, that will vary depending on how, what kind of precipitation or irrigation event you've had. Oh, they're smelling the soil now. Good idea. I should have mentioned that. And, and Kelly, what does that soil smell like? Slightly anaerobic. <laughs> Slightly anaerobic. Mm. Perhaps being in a jar has not been best for it uh, <laughs> for years. All right. So soil texture, and this is where this thing, oops, I can't step over the line. So the texture of the soil, this is what this is kind of showing, the different particle sizes and weights <coughs> as, you, as you look at it. So loamy, good textured soils form a ball when moist, but it remains crumbly. It kind of falls apart in your hands, but you can still see the texture. It still holds together slightly. On the other hand, sandy soils or light textured soils, you add water, forms a ball, and it falls completely apart. And you kind of, your hand's dirty. When you, when you try to put the ball down, there's a lot of it kind of trying to get in between your fingers. On the other hand, a heavy soil forms a ball that you can hold together, throw against the wall, and it still sticks, and you get sticky stuff on your hand. So this is the very highly technical way of finding out what kind of soil you have. Soil texture, which is that particle size we're talking about. So soil is made up of, I'm not going to, I've decided not to spend too much time on it. We're just going to say it's made up of, of smaller components and we call them particles. We also can call them many other things, but let's just go with particle. And the particle size will tell you whether you have sand, silt, or clay, the main, the main components. So sandy soil feels gritty. You can feel those gritty particles. But that silty or loamy soil feels just like we felt yesterday when we felt that talcum powder feel. Clay soil, well, duh, it feels darn right sticky. And obviously, almost all soils are a mixture of sand, silt, and clay. <coughs> you don't have, although some people feel like, they have just 100% clay or 100% sand. You really can't, unless you're at the beach. You can't really, but the best gardening soil is a balance of sand, silt, and clay. 
On the other hand, another thing to be considered about, con that we need to consider, is that not just <laughs> soil texture, you could have the best loamy soil for about a foot, and it can be underlain by a rock or a gravel or just a really hard soil, hard pan. And this is going to be especially problematic if you're trying to grow tree species. And you'll say, but, but I dig down and it looks good and the soil tests good. So sometimes there are these geological formations that thwart us. And it's good to know about that beforehand. My husband says that's why everyone should have a backhoe. I don't believe that. But there you have it. Oh God! There's another guy that thinks all men should ha all farms should have backhoes. Order backhoes. Pardon? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. A backhoe is um, you you put it on a tractor and it has a bucket and it digs down deep. You can you can tear up a lot of soil with a backhoe. Like a tractor with an excavator on the back. Uh, and this is a way to just like dig deep and figure out what's underneath. Is there any, right. Is there any other way? Yes, a shovel. <laughs> or an excavator. That's what we have. All right, yeah. Let's, all right, we're not going down any rabbit holes. Moving right along, starting with the checking the biological activity. So we've looked at smell, we've looked at feel, we've looked at color. Now we're going to do our little tests that we can do just with our shovel. And that is to dig a hole about a foot by a foot and a half and count the number of earthworms that are in that, that big shovel full. And you really want to have, depending on the time of season, because in the middle of winter, obviously, there aren't going to be as many. Late, in the f late, late fall, there aren't going to be as many. And real, real early spring. But during the growing season, you want to see about six to 10 earthworms. And then you can also look at, this is something I do a lot at my place, how long does it take for plant material to decompose? Weeks, months, God forbid, years. As my soil gets better, it just eats up any of the mulch that I put down or any of the living mulch I mow. And at first, I was a little irritated by that. And then I said, wait, wait, can't, can't be annoyed. That's a really good thing. One of my favorite graduate student projects at Montana State University that I saw was a student who spent two years marking cow patties in pastures and seeing how long they, do you know this one, Mike? How long they took to decompose and then evaluating the microbial community in relationship. And sure enough, fast cow patty decomposition is a diverse and abundant microbial life.